Hello guys in the next episode of our Fabric 101 series. In today's episode I would like to show you how to create fabric capacity using Azure portal and Terraform script. Before we will start creating a resource, let's go to the subscription where the resource will be located, open it, open resource provider and type using search box fabric. Uh, the first thing what you need to do is to register Microsoft Fabric Resource Provider. It will allow you to create fabric capacities. In my case, it's already registered. registered. In your case, if it's not registered, you can just click register button that is available on top and then you can create fabric uh, capacity. So the next step, if our resource provider is registered, let's use search box to find fabric. Creating fabric from Azure portal is pretty straightforward. The experience is very similar or even the same like we are creating other resources. So we need to create, create it by clicking create. Uh, we need to choose subscription resource group. I will create a new resource group called RG capacity 01. Then we need to give a meaningful name for our capacity. It will be, in my case, SQLity Fabric Capacity 01. Then we need to choose a region. Fabric is not available in all the regions. So uh, choose from the list uh, this one that was applicable for you. In my case, it will be Sweden Central. And then we have the most important uh, setting that we need to set is uh, size, size of our capacity. So SKU, the default is F64. Of course, for testing purposes, I will prefer F2 because it's a uh, waste of money to create a huge capacities. Um, please be sure that you will choose uh, for productive deployments, proper SKU because it's not only the size and compute power that it is available for us, but also some features. In the official documentation, you can find information that, for example, Copilot is available only for F64 or higher. The same with managed private endpoints or trusted workspace access and so on and so forth. So if you have a more restricted requirements regarding networking, security, you want to use Copilot, uh, F64 will or higher will be a uh, good fit for you. Uh, there is also one more thing that I wanted to uh, highlight. If you go to the next page of the documentation, you will find information uh, how many V cores you have uh, available for you, but also you will find out what's the mapping between Fabric SKU and Power BI SKU. So if you have premium capacity for your for your Power BI deployment and you want to migrate it to fabric capacity in this table you will find the proper information so typically it looks like that if you have P1 let's say you can uh, go to F64 the last remark that I wanted to say is that uh, if you have F64 or higher your report consumers don't need a Power BI Pro or premium per user license if you have a lower level uh, you need to have license for your uh, report consumers that's also very very important okay let's go back to our uh, wizard so I choose f2 then I need to assign fabric capacity administrator so I need to choose a proper uh, email address who will be administrator of this capacity then when we click next we have tags so key value pairs that you can assign to this resource it's pretty common in Azure deployments uh, it can be used for example for cost allocation from Azure perspective uh, to proper cost center or assigning who is the ad who is the owner of this resource and so on and so forth in my case I will not use it for now review and create and click create. And after a few minutes, uh, this capacity should be available for us. 
if it will be available uh, it should automatically appear in the um, Power BI or Fabric portal. Right now I am in the admin portal so if I will refresh and under capacity settings if I will go to fabric capacity tab you will see that our um, our capacity is available all the information are available here let's go let's see if it works yeah let's try to refresh and see if it works yes it's available here and as you can see automatically it appeared also in the our admin portal we can manage it from here, assign permission, who can use it, and so on and so forth. Uh, of course, if we have uh, work, workspaces, we can assign this workspace to the fabric capacity that we already created. So, as you can see, entire experience is pretty straightforward and very fast. And of course, it can be also automated using ARM templates, API, or Terraform. And right now, I would like to show you how to do it in Terraform. Creating fabric capacity from Terraform, it's a very straightforward process and it's not very complicated. So I strongly recommend you to go this way when creating fabric capacities because those Terraform scripts are um, just text files. So we can, we can keep it in the repository. Uh, we can always uh, recreate it if needed, change it. We have history of changes. So you know all, all the benefits that are uh, connected to the repositories. So let's go with it. As you can see, I have very simplified scenario. I have only two files, uh, main TF and variables TF. Let's start with variables TF. Here we'll have some kind of a parameters that we, we want to parameterize. Uh, our deployment I created only three uh, location so what will be the region where our capacity will be located in this case Sweden Central uh, we have SKU in this case it will be F2 and admin email it's my own email address I will be assigned as administrator of this capacity so we have definition of um, our um, parameters our variables then in main TF uh, it's also very very easy we have um, terraform provider azure rm we'll use it to create azure resources uh, in this case we'll create resource group called rg fabric tf uh, as you can see location is parameterized so the value is taken from the variables tf uh, then we have resource lock resource lock is something that i didn't show you on the portal but uh, logs are very useful especially if we want to create resources that should not be deleted and fabric capacity for sure should not be deleted without reason um, this creation of this log is pretty straightforward we need to give it a name in this case scope in this uh, scenario scope is our resource group so we provided identifier of this uh, of this resource group and lock level is cannot delete cannot delete so resource group itself cannot be deleted and all the resources within this resource group will not be deleted also it will prevent uh, accidentally deletion and so on and so forth so strongly recommended to do it like that then uh, we have fabric capacity itself instead of uh, creating something from scratch i recommend you to use a script or module in this case that is created by azure data labs so you can reference it just like that it's located on the github you can always look at the code itself copy it if you don't want to reference it uh, like i did uh, in this case it's good to know that it's not using azure rm standard azure rm it's not using it because fabric is not available in this provider so it's using az api az api the only thing that we need to provide is a base name so it's just a name of our capacity then a resource group where it should, will be located so we are using reference to the resource group created above location is coming from uh, variables the same with sku the same with admin email so those uh, few lines will create for us our fabric capacity 
Okay, we have our script ready, so let's start deploying it. Of course, right now we are deploying it interactively, so from our desktop, but if you want to automate it from Azure DevOps and GitHub, you will use probably different method to deploy it. For now, we'll show you how to do it interactively. So, first of all, we need to log into our Azure tenant. To do it, I will use Azure CLI. So, to log in, I need to type AZ login. Okay, and you can see I can choose proper account login. I was my uh, laptop is connected to the tenant, so I don't need to provide any password or MFA. When you will log in, probably you need to provide those information, but that's okay for now. Uh, under your tenant, you can have multiple subscriptions. I have only one called Azure Azure sponsorship. It has number one, so. Azure CLI will ask you to provide proper number uh, of a subscription. Uh, so I will provide one. And right now, this session context is set to this subscription. So all the Terraform activities that we'll perform in a minute will run against this subscription. Good. So to initiate our Terraform project, we need to put a proper command uh, Terraform in it then it will initialize our entire project it should not take a lot of time uh, we are referencing module that is on the github so it will also take this information from the github uh, as you can see proper uh, providers are installed not only azure rm but also az api that i told you that uh, this module from GitHub is using AZ API. It's already initiated. So the only thing that we need to do right now is to provide Terraform plan. Terraform plan will tell us uh, what will be deployed or what will be destroyed in the target subscription. In this case, we are doing it for the first time. So the only information that we should get is that uh, Azure Resource Group will be created, Azure Resource Lock and Capacity. So three resources should be created and nothing should be removed. Okay, after some time, you can see the plan, what Terraform is planning to do. And we have information that uh, Lock will be created, Resource Group will be created and Fabric Capacity will be created so three resources will be added so right now to be sure that it works and we will create those resources we need to type terraform apply and i will add additional option called auto approve so i i will not be asked to approve this operation After some time, you can see that all those resources are present. So Terraform created it. Uh, we can switch to um, Power BI portal, uh, refresh resource group view. And as you can see, RG Fabric TF is here. Uh, we see our capacity. It's already created. If we go to locks, we see that delete lock is already in place so if we will try to delete it it will block us if we will go to uh, let's say capacity settings we should see our new capacity in place and as you can see it's already here so creating fabric capacity is very simple no matter which way you go using graphical interface or terraform script or maybe arm templates it doesn't matter please be aware of uh, those um, things connected to the sku uh, consider applying lock and also if possible use uh, terraform or arm templates to deploy your resources thank you for watching and see you next time